Hello. I have got a very sharp circular saw blade, as good as new, and I've not had to leave the workshop to get it. Welcome to Workshop Essentials. For most of the last 40 years, I've lived within 15 minutes of a good saw doctor. The first one I could walk there in 15 minutes, but the old man retired and the business closed. The next one was 15 minutes drive away, which is okay. But then I moved house and that 15 minutes was an hour. But there was an ironmonger's who did a collection service just 15 minutes away. But now I live in rural France and although there is a saw doctor, it's the best part of an hour away and there's no collection service. So to take a blade in is to go there and back and then collect it a week later, it's half a day in the car to go and get a blade sharpened. So I started looking at alternatives and there are lots of sharpening jigs on YouTube. They all suffer, in my opinion, from the same fundamental weakness in that they require a powered blade, a diamond blade in a, in a table saw or in an angle grinder or in a Dremel. And I do not like the idea of powder grinding tungsten carbide in my workshop, especially as I've got to get my face fairly close to see what I'm doing. I don't want to lose a tooth and I don't want to be inhaling dust. So I've come up with this. It's powered by toast uh, or whatever you have for breakfast in the morning. It will handle any sized blade that I want from my smallest one which is off my biscuit jointer, through my track saw, my table saw, and my sliding compound mitre saw. So anything from 100 to 300 millimeters. Ow, that hurts. It's sharp now, I did that yesterday. <laughs> and um, all my blades have got different bores. So I've got different size spigots, 30 millimeters. Uh, what's that, 22 probably. 20 and 5 eighths for some of my table saw blades. The jig consists of two basic parts. So let's dismantle it and see what we've got. The first part to make is this upright uh, mounting board. And this has got a slot which accommodates different diameters of blade. It's got a hanging hole. And on the back, it's got a groove. So this takes, can we put that in the vise? I think we, we can. This takes a flange nut, which moves up and down. A flange nut like that. And uh, my different sized spigots screw into that through this slot. So I'm doing my 10 inch table saw blade that's got a 5 8 bore. So uh, it goes in like that. And I can do adjust the height for the diameter of the blade. The vertical mounting board has a shallow groove routed down the centre and I'm working from both long edges to ensure centrality. So those two edges must be truly parallel. The groove is deep enough to take the flange of a flange nut. And then I route a slot right through to take the barrel of the nut. This process is called dropping on and must be done with care so as to, to avoid kickback. A pair of stop blocks positioned fore and aft help me to do the job safely and consistently with each small increase in depth until I'm right through. It's a bit fluffy, but that's a nice movement that is, and it's below the surface, which is what I need. 
The slot must go high enough to mount my little biscuit jointer blade and low enough to mount my large sliding compound mitre saw blade. I have a selection of spigots which I've turned on the lathe which screw into the flange nut at the appropriate height according to the blade. Now we turn our attention to the sliding fence. There are two slots to route, again with stops for dropping onto the spinning cutter, and turning it end for end with each cut keeps the two slots identical. This footage is actually from the prototype that I made last week. These two slots need to be dead central. And then back on the motherboard, I drilled two 10 mm holes deep enough to take an M6 nut and then right through at 6.5 mm for a Bristol lever. And so now that countersunk hole makes it very easy to find where to put the Bristol lever and that little bit of play between the six millimeters of the thread and the quarter inch of the slot here means that this can get be exactly flush with the top which is what we want and it works both ways as well like when I turn it over it's exactly the same just what I want with the sliding fence moved as far left as it will go I want to mark where the end of my working face will go so I've marked top dead center on the mount board and I'm just going to transfer that to there and I need to put my working face on, on this length here where's my pencil gone so this is going to be the negative one and it's going to go uh, pointing in that direction and then we turn it over like that oh, it's not time to move on so there we go and uh, for this one it goes as far right as it'll go and again we mark top dead center with my marking knife and this is going to be the positive And that's going to go pointing in that direction. So now we need to cut some little blocks to fit there and on there and glue them together. Right so we need a slot in here the biscuit slot was cut while the workpiece was longer so I'd got something to get hold of and then I snipped it off on my sliding compound mitre saw using my million dollar stick because it's actually quite a short workpiece. Perfect. That goes in there. That goes in there. And that is beautifully flush there. Very good. That needs a clamp on it. So I can just adjust the height until the tooth that I'm looking at is just above the top of the jig. Oops, a daisy. That there. And then adjust my fence laterally until when that tooth is vertical, I'm in line with it. About there, like that. And it's quite easy to do by sight. You do need you do need pretty good eyesight. And then you spile away. Now, if you prefer, you can calculate that 
mathematically. So let's change the blade and I'll show you on this one here, which is a negative rake blade. So that means taking my fence off and turning it over like that. And now I'm going to work over on the right hand side of the center line because it's a negative rate blade. I also need to change my spigot for 30 millimeters. And we'll put the blade on like that. We need to lower it a wee bit to get it about there. And now we can calculate what the offset is. To calculate the offset, we multiply the sine of the angle by the radius of the blade. And in this case, it gives me 13.29 millimeters. Like I say, you need pretty good eyesight. And so we mark 13 millimeters or so, 13 a bit, uh, on the top of the top of the jig and set my fence to it like that and that way I know that my tooth when it's up against the support block is dead vertical so this is set up ready to sharpen how do we actually sharpen it let me just put that away how do we actually sharpen it well you need a, a you need a, a file that's quite thin because it's got to go, get in the gullets this is a diamond file uh, which you need for tungsten carbide teeth really and you need to take the same number of strokes on each tooth now you might think that's a lot of counting because you, it takes more than one or two strokes to clean up a tooth you can count if you want but actually i use a rhythm and um, think of it as a little tune it's a beat anyway and my little rhythm will give me 31 strokes of the file. And it goes like this. It's a jig, remember. Jigga 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 jigga. That is 31 strokes of the file, and I didn't have to count. All I had to do was that little bit of rhythm. Then I move to the next tooth. Jigga 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 Yeah, you get the picture. If you've got a better way of doing it without counting and without making yourself look very stupid, tell me in the comments below. I'd be very interested to see who comes with the most ingenious way of doing it. But I go around the blade and um, actually it's a good idea to mark your initial blade with a magnet so that when you get round to it, when you get round to it like that, you feel it in your fingers before you sharpen the first tooth twice. So that works quite well. I keep my little, if I can get it off. <laughs> These magnets are quite strong, aren't they? Oh dear, it's getting windy. <clears throat> the only other remaining thing to do is to fit on the back a support block. Uh, and this does two things. It keeps all my um, spigots nicely stored. Uh, and it also gives me support so, so that it sits in the vise and doesn't tip over. And then when I'm not using it, I can just hang it on the wall over there. So this is very easy to make. And even my big blade is quite quick. There are 72 teeth on this blade. And I sharpened this yesterday or the day before. It took me less than 16 minutes. I couldn't get halfway to Belak in 16 minutes, let alone have it sharpened and returned and back on my saw. That came, the, the other blade that's on my saw, the saw was down for about half an hour. 
uh, and I think that's pretty, pretty good really. And I'm not breathing in dust and I'm not making a noise and it just works. It does any size blade, any rake angle. I'm a very happy bunny. So if your saw blades need a little bit of sorting out, why don't you build this jig? It's dead easy to do and I'm sure you'll be as pleased with the results as I am. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. And please remember to like, subscribe and share. It's the only way this work gets seen.